What is parental alienation? The concept of parental alienation was first put forth by Dr. Richard Gardner in 1985. Parental alienation primarily occurs during a high-conflict divorce in which the child identifies strongly with one parent, usually the custodial parent. The other parent is hated and rejected without any justifiable reason, this alienation is engineered at the hands of the alienating parent, who often pressures the child to go along with their hatred of the other parent. The alienating parent programs the child to despise their other parent by criticizing the alienated parent and interfering with their relationship. While the alienated parent obviously suffers in this situation, the child does as well. The child experiences the loss of their alienated parent like they would a premature death of a parent. The child is also likely to feel neglected and angry. They may take on traits of the alienating parent, such as lack of empathy and rigid thinking. Types of parental alienation Parental alienation can be classified by its severity, from mild to severe. Treatment will depend on the symptoms and severity. Mild Mild parental alienation is marked by a child who is resistant to visiting with the alienated parent but enjoys spending time with their parent once they are alone together. Moderate A child with moderate parental alienation will strongly resist any contact with the alienated parent and maintains resentment and opposition during their time with them. Severe In cases of severe parental alienation, the child may not only strongly resist any contact with the alienated parent but may also run away or hide to avoid having to visit with them. Signs of Parental Alienation If you're worried your child may be experiencing parental alienation, here are some signs to watch for. Unjust Criticism No parent is perfect, some may even lose their tempers or even yell at their children, and all children get mad at their parents at times. Children with parental alienation, however, will criticize you severely and without cause. They rarely or never have anything good to say about you. If they do have fun with you, they may ask you to keep it from their other parent. Unwavering support for the alienating parent. As much as they criticize you, your child will staunchly defend their other parent. They have extreme black and white thinking. Everything you do is bad and everything their other parent does is good. They will deny that the alienating parent has influenced them and claim their feelings are all their own. No feelings of guilt. While most children who get mad and say hurtful things to their parents will feel sorry and apologize later, children with parental alienation feel no guilt about their mistreatment of you. They feel justified in their hatred and may even extend it to include your entire family. Their criticism and harshness may include your parents and siblings as well. Treating parental alienation Treating parental alienation depends on the severity of it. If your child has a mild case, it may be enough for a judge to order the alienating parent to stop talking bad about you in front of your child and abide by the parenting plan. You may also benefit from a parenting coordinator, such as through a parenting class, to help you and your ex to better communicate and support your child's relationships with each other. In moderate cases of parental alienation, a parenting coordinator or counselor can work with you and your child's other parent to improve communication. It may help all of you to attend individual counseling as well. However, this approach will only work if the alienating parent is committed to correcting the problem. In severe cases, or in moderate cases with an uncooperative alienating parent, it may be necessary to remove the child from the custody of the alienating parent. Parental alienation is a type of abuse and sometimes must be treated as other cases of abuse would be, by removing the child from the situation. If this is done, the child may be placed with you and the other parent will be given supervised visitation, at least temporarily. It's important to recognize parental alienation in its early stages because the treatment for the more severe stages may do more harm than good. If reunification is forced and the child sees it as a punishment, it could cause lasting harm. Children who are taken away from the alienating parent may feel more helpless and experience further traumatization. If you think your child may have parental alienation, seek professional help. 
Start with a therapist who understands parental alienation and can work with you to formulate a plan to help your child. How do other experts in the field feel about this? First things first there's this large manual, called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, since it's currently in its fifth revision, that lists mental health conditions recognized by the American Psychiatric Association. But the DSM-5 does have a code for child affected by parental relationship distress, which PA would fall under. And there's no doubt that a damaged parent-child relationship can be a big problem. It stands to reason that it can affect mental health. So PA isn't really considered an official syndrome in the mental health or scientific fields, and it's not something your child can be diagnosed with. That doesn't mean the situation and its mental health effects don't happen. Parental alienation. Parental alienation is when one parent discredits the other parent to a child or children the two share. For example, perhaps mom tells her child that their dad doesn't love them or want to see them. Or a dad tells his child that their mom prefers her new family and kids with a new partner to them. Accusations can be mild or they can become incredibly severe. This distorts the child's perception of the alienated parent regardless of how great their relationship was with that parent before. Basically, the parent-child relationship suffers, whether the allegations are true or not. If a child is repeatedly told, for example, that dad is a bad person and doesn't want to see them even if it isn't true the child may eventually refuse to talk to or see dad when the opportunity arises. Sometimes, the parent doing the bad mouthing is called the alienator and the parent who is the subject of the criticism is the alienated. Terms that often come up when talking about parental alienation. Alienator or programming parent, parent doing the alienating. Alienated, parent who is the subject of criticism slash hateful allegations or claims. Child who has been programmed, child who takes on the alienator's view of the alienated, in severe cases, child who fully rejects the alienated signs and symptoms of parental alienation syndrome when Gardner talked about PA he identified eight symptoms or criteria for it the child constantly and unfairly criticizes the alienated parent sometimes called a campaign of denigration the child doesn't have any strong evidence specific examples or justifications for the criticisms or only has false reasoning the child's feelings about the alienated parent aren't mixed they're all negative, with no redeeming qualities to be found. This is sometimes called lack of ambivalence. The child claims the criticisms are all their own conclusions and based on their own independent thinking. In reality, in PA, the alienating parent is said to program the child with these ideas. The child has unwavering support for the alienator. The child doesn't feel guilty about mistreating or hating the alienated parent. The child uses terms and phrases that seem borrowed from adult language when referring to situations that never happened or happened before the child's memory. The child's feelings of hatred toward the alienated parent expand to include other family members related to that parent, for example, grandparents or cousins on that side of the family. Gardner later added that to be diagnosed with pot the child should have a strong bond with the alienator and previously have had a strong bond with the alienated. He also said the child should show negative behaviors when with the alienated parent and have difficulty with custody transitions. Signs that parental alienation may be taking place. So are you or your ex-partner an alienator, alienating the other parent? Here are some signs that may exist. An alienator might divulge unnecessary relational details for example, instances of affairs to a child. This can certainly make the child feel alienated themselves, as well as angry at, and feeling personally hurt by, something that was really between mom and dad. An alienator may prevent a child from seeing or talking to the other parent, while saying that the alienated is busy slash occupied slash uninterested in the child. An alienator may insist the child's personal items all be kept at the alienator's house, regardless of how much time the kid spends with the other parent. You're supposed to be at your dad's this weekend, 
but I was thinking it's the perfect weekend to invite your friends to a sleepover here for your birthday this month. What would you like to do? Related to the above, an alienator might frequently bend or break custody guidelines, arranged inside or outside of court. On the flip side, an alienator may also refuse to compromise on a custody agreement. For example, if mom's birthday falls on a day when dad has custody and dad is an alienator, he may rigidly refuse to let the kid go to mom's birthday dinner when mom asks. Secrecy may become rampant. There are several ways this can happen, the alienator may keep medical records, report cards, information about the child's friends, and more all under wraps. This can alienate the child from the other parent because let's face it if one parent knows all your friends, likes, and activities, that's the parent you'll want to talk to. And related to secrecy, gossip may become rampant. The alienator may ask the child about the alienated parent's personal life and more. This can then become a subject of gossip. Oh, your dad has a new girlfriend? What's she like? Wonder how long it will last. He had four girlfriends the year you were in kindergarten and we were still married, you know. The alienator may become controlling when it comes to the child's relationship with the other parent. For example, the alienator could try to monitor all phone calls, text messages, or interactions. The alienator may actively compare the other parent to a new partner. This could take the form of the child hearing that their stepmom loves them more than their mom. A child might even be told that their stepparent will adopt them and give them a new last name. These are just some of the forms parental alienation may take. Be aware that PA is a tricky thing to use in legal contexts when it comes to custody agreements, because it's hard to prove. Ironically, it's in custody disputes that PA comes up the most. PA can also be used to continue, hide, or reinforce abuse. This is a serious situation that can involve criminal allegations. Does it take different forms based on whether mom or dad is doing the alienating? The short answer to this is not really just that society has changed enough in the past 30 years that alienation is probably equally likely with either parent. Gardner originally said that 90% of alienators were mothers. Is this because women are more jealous, controlling, or concerned for their kids and men are more prone to doing things women see as worthy of alienation? Doubtful. Any person whether a mom or a dad can have the qualities that lend themselves to alienating. It's probably more related to the still somewhat accepted ideal in the 1970s and 1980s that dads were the breadwinners and moms ruled the home and therefore had more say with the kids. But times have changed. In fact, Gardner later said he saw a shift in alienators from 90% mothers to a 50 50 ratio of mothers and fathers. Still, in many places, due to long-standing societal norms, among other things, the person who gets more custody by default, all other things being equal, is mom. That puts mom in a place where it may be easier to alienate dad, on the other hand and also due to long-standing societal norms, expectations, wage gaps, and more dad may have more resources at his disposal to alienate mom when it comes to legal fees in custody battles and tempting the kids with gifts or promises. However, we aren't saying this is necessarily the case. Either way, the child has to deal with the consequences. How parental alienation affects the kids. One 2016 study surveyed 109 college-aged individuals and found a significant link between the behaviors of alienating parents and the behaviors of those who had been alienated. In other words, children who are subject to a parental alienation situation may grow up to behave in much the same way as the alienator. Children who are alienated from one parent may experience increased anger, have heightened feelings of neglect, or even have their basic needs actually neglected while being caught in the middle of their parents fight learn a destructive pattern that they pass on to others take on a skewed view of reality and become prone to lying about others become combative with others due to learning and us versus them mentality see things as very black and white lack empathy but in most other circumstances where two parents started out together and involved in a child's life 
the child gains the most from having both parents in their lives after a split. 2. Kids are resilient. But they are also impressionable. If parental alienation is going on, the children become more vulnerable. What can you do about it? There's no established, one-size-fits-all treatment for PA for a couple reasons. 1. It's not an official diagnosis. But two, and even if it were a medically recognized condition PA and the circumstances are so individual. In some situations, therapy to reunite the child with the alienated parent may help. In other cases, forcing a child to undergo this kind of reunification therapy may be traumatizing. And court orders can certainly add to the trauma, with legal authorities lacking the proper training to deal with a complex mental health situation. Finding a reputable family counseling center and quality therapist and child psychologist may be the best place to start. Mediators court appointed or otherwise can also be helpful. Treatment will need to be individualized to your family's specific situation. The dynamic, developmental age of your child, and other factors will all come into play. For a place to start, talk to your child's pediatrician about child mental health specialists they recommend. The takeaway. Parental alienation syndrome has never been accepted by the medical or scientific communities as a disorder or syndrome. This can make it really problematic when it comes up in courts of law as part of custody considerations. Regardless, parent alienation sadly exists and can damage not only relational health, but a child's own mental health as well. If you find yourself in this situation, it's important to seek counseling for your individual circumstances with a qualified mental health professional.